Hi, I'm McBean, and this is your MyFreeActingClass.com lesson for Tuesday, August the 18th. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for making time uh, in an insane heat wave uh, to join us, and for everybody who is watching the YouTube video later, I hope it's much cooler when you are watching this than it is right now, because all of us are sweating and trying to pretend that we're not. Uh, the, uh, today, our guest is uh, Richard Bradshaw, who is a uh, stunt performer uh, and a stunt coordinator. Um, I'm gonna, let's look at his resume on IMDB quickly. This is uh, imdb.com, it's the Internet Movie Database. Uh, we've got Richard, trained as an actor in the UK, uh, British fencing team. Uh, the, we've got a whole bunch of different things here, Game of Thrones, X-Men, Harry Potter, Robin Hood. Uh, stunt coordinator on Warrior, uh, which is a HBO show, is that right, Richard? That's right, yeah. Uh, the, I have a, a couple of friends who are working on that. Uh, Batwoman, yeah, uh, Bruce Lee. Thrones, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I can throw this into the chat window and you can uh, look him up for yourself and be like, wow, he's amazing. Um, but uh, suffice to say, you know, that we've got, he's got 124 credits on here uh, and that uh, the, something like this, you know, uh, stunt coordinator 20 episodes uh, is a big deal. There are only a handful of people who do that in Vancouver at any point in time, you know, and it requires not just being a skilled stunt performer, but also being able to um, coordinate stunt performers. Um, so throwing that into the chat window right now, uh, there's Richard, if you want to multitask, uh, and then we will throw the video over to him. Hello, Richard Bradshaw. Hi, how are you? Uh, the, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with Zoom, uh, but you can uh, very easily, if you, uh, Put it in the gallery view, sort of see all the humans. It's the see everyone up, up above. Oh, it's the nine little dots in the top right. Yeah, Perfect. there you go. There's everyone. Wait. Cool. Uh, and so, uh, Richard, just I'll ask a couple of questions to get us started, and then uh, we'll see what people are curious about. Sounds good. Um, and so, it uh, you you started uh, with acting, you know, before stunts. Is that accurate? Yeah, when I uh, when I left uh, when I graduated high school, I, I wanted to be an actor, and I did a uh, three-year performing arts course, um, and then went out into the uh, the professional world and, and tried it, and it was not quite as I'd uh, as I'd I guess I'd hoped. It was harder and more difficult and different challenges, um, and. I had a, a bit of time out from the entertainment world completely during my twenties, but then uh, decided to come back and, and start auditioning again. And I met a guy at an audition who was training to do stunts, and I I had never thought about that. Um, but I, uh, from a young age, was an athlete doing many different sort of sports, and it seemed like the the performing that I was trying to do professionally and the athletic stuff that I'd uh, been enjoying forever, all combined into one and someone would pay me to do it. So there we go. Amazing. Those of you who uh, remember uh, Patrick Sabongi joining us you know, a month or two ago, uh, do you remember how he said that uh, somebody asked him about getting into stunts and he said that a lot of the time it's competitive athletes you know, who uh, get in there. So I just want to uh, you see that echoed in Richard's story. Um, so because we've got such a mixed group here uh, and you know, we've got you know, kids, we've got adults, we've got folks with uh, a few professional credits, and then we've got folks you know, who are uh, just wanting to get into this for the first time. Um, just so that we're not kind of making any assumptions, can you talk about what it is to be a stunt performer? You know, what, sort of what that job actually looks like, uh, as opposed to sort of what the media might say about it or what the stereotype is? There are a number of different uh, different roles you might take as a stunt performer, and probably the, the uh, the most well known would be doubling an actor. And for that, you need to be similar sort of height, build, coloring to that actor. And then uh, hair and makeup will assist to make you as, as close as possible. Um, and depending on what the action sequence we're looking at, whether it's fights, whether it's some car or motorcycle action or some horse action, uh, getting set on fire, whatever it may be, um, you'll potentially have some rehearsal time, uh, possibly with your actor, 
prior to the uh, the filming day, especially if it's uh, it's a fight, there's gonna be some choreography needed uh, and dialing the actor into the beats that they will um, they will do themselves. And how much an actor does themselves is a very large part down to how athletic that actor is. In the same way as every uh, section of, of the community, some people are just more athletic than others. Some people enjoy it more, others just really don't. Um, it can also be a factor of how much time we have, whether we have time to rehearse the actor before they're straight into their shooting schedule. Mm. Um, or if it's a lead actor on a show, maybe they are just back to back shooting every minute of every day and, and we grab them in a lunch break and that's all we have for rehearsal time. Mm. Um, so then coming to shooting, uh, I'm very much responsible for looking after the actor as a, as a double um, and making sure that they have appropriate body pads on, uh, that their harness, if they're flying around, is, is secure and is as comfortable as it can be. Harnesses are not the most comfortable thing in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm there just off frame looking after the, the actor whenever they are performing in front of camera. And then the shots will turn around on me for, um, for the elements that I'm doing, which would generally be the elements where there is potential for someone to get hurt, whether it's about getting about potentially me getting hurt because I'm having an impact with something or whether I'm sliding a car around or riding a horse. So it would be potentially the crew around or other cast who might get hurt because there's a certain skill level that's needed. Mm. Um, so the shots will be carefully chosen by the stunt coordinator which is another hat that I um, that mm -hmm. I work with, um, so that the we get the the maximum value from the actor, um, but equally the maximum excitement from the action sequence. Fantastic. So, do um, I don't actually know much about the role of the stunt coordinator you know, beyond that it's sort of the um, top level position overseeing the stunts. Do you do a lot of the planning of the action, you know, or do the, do they typically come to you and say, here's what we want it to look like? Well, I would get a script, which is a words on paper version of here's what we want it to look like. Mm -hmm. But as all you actors know, a, a script is just the sort of the starting block and you create your characters in the same way as stunt coordinator. I, I'm then using my creativity to, to tell a visual story through my translation of that, of that script into action. And that'll be in conjunction with communication with, with the director, with the, the DLP, with the production designer, everyone else that's, that's involved in that, that sort of sequence. Uh, and looking at the, the scheduling, the amount of time that we have to shoot it. Um, you know, the, the amount of time that we would have to shoot a fight on Batwoman compared with the time that we have to shoot a fight on Game of Thrones or on X-Men is a very different time frame. And it could be the same words on, on a script page, but it translates into something entirely different mm. in a, a filming day. Uh, cool, thank you. Uh, the, what, hey, one of the things that keeps coming up in our sessions from different people in different disciplines is, um, especially with how inconsistent, you know, anything in the performing arts world can be, how important it is to love what you're doing. Uh, can, can we ask you like what you love about stunts? Like what's sort of kept you in it long enough to have a career in that? I think a big part of it is the variety. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I love that I'm not uh, a specialist just, just doing cars or mm -hmm. just doing martial arts fight scenes. Um, so every day on set is going to be different. I'm, I'm working with different casts, different actors, um, and teaching them, encouraging them, giving them the opportunity to, to, um, to perform in a, in a way that, that often they, they, they haven't done before. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I love the physical expression of, of, of creativity and of storytelling. Beautiful. 
Um, the, uh, yes, you're absolutely right. You do have to love it when you're working 15, 16, 17 hour days regularly. You know, and uh, I've under, I understand that, that stunts is uh, very competitive to break into, that you basically have to really want it and be excited about it and you know, be good at making connections with other humans in order to break in in the first place. Is that accurate? That's 100% accurate, yeah. Um, it, it, is, it is very competitive. There, there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of people that wanted to get into it. And as Patrick has already mentioned, they tend to be athletes, and athletes by their nature are pretty competitive people. Right. So it, it, it's, it, it's a spiral that, uh, that, that just goes, goes up. Um, but uh, I think because of the safety um, side of stunts, and you are often relying on the other stunt performers around you to keep you safe, and they're relying on you to keep them safe. Um, the, having that, that personal relationship with, uh, with the people that you're working with, trusting them, knowing that you can rely on their work to be consistent, um, that they will keep you safe is, is a huge part of, of, of how you choose a team. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, and uh, the... Uh, it's the stunt coordinators make decisions ab about who they want directly, you know, right? There, there isn't like an audition process for stunts typically, is there? Um, you will from time to time get a, a role called a stunt actor. Yeah. Where there is a, a small part where um, production make the decision that they want to be able to cast someone who can do the action themselves rather than cast uh, an actor and then know that they are gonna have to double that actor as well, yeah. Um, so yes, there are, there are certainly times when when um, some men will be required to come in for an audition, but that will be a audition in the acting side of things. Yes. Um, equally, when you know, Warrior is a good example. I was I was working in Cape Town, South Africa, on Warrior, mm -hmm. and I didn't know the performers out there. Um, so to see the people and what their skill sets are. The, the the team that that came over that that we all knew each other, mm. we set up a little fight workshop. Cool. We invited loads of people along. They all came along, did their stuff. We could see the, the skill sets that people had. Mm. So, yeah, there, there was a, a kind of a general audition process, but it is very different to to acting auditions. Uh, the the stunt performers that I've known uh, train really intensively. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, just for anybody who's curious there? I think there is, uh, as you say, a very intensive training. I, I think everyone needs to stay on top of their game. Um, and the broad skill sets that many of us try to, to keep up with in terms of gymnastic ability, fight ability, uh, I've mentioned cars, motorcycles, horses. Um, uh, you know, some people are uh, trampolinists, cyborg divers. Um, that there are there are so many different uh, different areas that 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 we want to keep training in. Um, that it's not just training to keep up with stuff, but it's trying to balance all the different things that we want to keep current in. You know, you, you, your actors here they they they're training regularly to to keep their skills up. But I, I guess maybe the maybe a similar example is if this class is working on, I don't know, maybe, maybe script work or characterization, but maybe this class isn't working so much on physicalization of a character, mm -hmm. and then you'd have to go to another class to to work on that. So there's there's a lot of lot of different things that you need to keep keep current with. Uh, there's a commonality, um, at least in my mind, between the world of stunts and the world of voiceover, which you've heard Michelle talk about, and she's going to come back on Thursday, which is that uh, because you're not always seeing somebody's face very clearly, uh, there's no reason why a very small uh, group of extremely skilled people uh, can't do most of the work. You know, and so the uh, that's one of those things where, you know, a, at least I've been told that both of them, it's difficult to break in, but because uh, there is so much internal connection and the relationships between people are so close and tight, like you said, they have to trust and rely on each other. That sort of once you make some of those connections, then it becomes a part of a community. And, and the folks I know who've done that have really spoken highly of that experience. I, I very much agree with that. And, and I would say I, I've 
I, I've had the privilege of working in a, in a lot of different places around the world. I, I, I've worked, well, based in, in the UK, but all over Europe. Mm-hmm. I've worked in New Zealand, in Australia, in many different places around, around the States, uh, Cape Town, South Africa, uh, North Africa, a, a, a lot of different places. Um, and uh, Vancouver has a truly unique stunt community to the extent that it really is a community. Um, mm. We talked about the competitiveness of, of uh, athletes going into the uh, entertainment industry. Yes. Well, here, yes, there is that competition, but there is also um, an extraordinary sense of working together to support and build the community. Cool. Uh, and that is a very cool experience. Uh, and one of the things that, that very much attracted me to uh, to move over from, from the UK to the opposite side of the world and, uh, and live here. Mm. Uh, the, I, I think we should open it up you know, and find out what people are genuinely curious about because you know, we've only got 12 and a half more minutes of uh, Richard Bradshaw's time you know, and uh, let's find out uh, what you want to know. So um, you can you know, wave your hand and play it around or in the participants uh, tab, you can hit the little like you know, raise hand button um, Kevin, do you want to jump in with a question? Yeah. Um, hi, Richard. Hey, uh, is there a stunt school or kind of how do you get started in stunts? Uh, in Vancouver, there is no specific stunt school, um, but there are, in, in the way that I talked about uh, the many different things that you need to train in, there are, for example, a couple of specific gymnastic gyms where there are stunt coordinators and stunt people that train at go along train there, you get to know them, you work alongside them, they'll, they'll share their skill set, they'll see what you can do, they'll, they'll help boost you along the way. And from them, you may then learn about a place to go trampoline. You may then learn about a place to go slide a car around. So word, word spreads. Um, so there's no, there's no one stunt school is, is the answer, but there are a lot of areas where you would find yourself surrounded by other stunt performers. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, cool, uh, anybody else you know, got a question that's on top of the mind? Because I mean, I can keep asking Richard questions forever, but uh, you know, I want to know what you want to know. Anybody, what about some of our younger folks? Anybody? Yeah, Elaine, please. Hi, can you hear me? Hey, yes, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay, hi, how's it going? <laughs> Yeah, so is there a difference between the stunt person and the double stunt? Uh, um, stunt double, I don't know. Not, not in terms of the, the action that they do. Um, in that a stunt double, let, let's say you've got a big fight scene. So you've got our villains has said to all his security guards, go in and kill that guy. So we've got our... our, our hero and our heroine who are now surrounded by 10 villains and they've got to fight their way out of this room. So we're going to have our two cast and we're going to have two doubles and 10, what they call ND, nondescript stunts. And we have a big fight that's, that's been choreographed and rehearsed before we come on the set. So in terms of the skills, they are all having to learn the fight and they're all having to look cool in the fight. Um, the difference is in terms of the performance that our doubles in addition to looking cool in the fight, they need to, to some extent, match the physicality of their cast member. So people move differently and, and a lot of uh, really great actors create their character through the way that character carries themselves or, or moves or any little mannerisms. And a good double will tune into that and will bring those mannerisms, those way of, that way of holding themselves, of moving into how they perform that fight. So in the final cut, you really believe that it's that character throughout the fight. So, yes, they have the, the same things that they have to do, but there's a, just a little bit extra 
that makes you a really good stunt double. Thanks. Um, Dia, do you want to jump in with your question? Yeah, sure. Um, so thank you so much for your time. It's, hey, absolutely. Valuable. Um, I was wondering, there's a lot of time that we would have um, right now because of everything that's happening. And there's a lot of young people here as well. So I was just wondering, as an actor, is there any specific skill set that we can bring or some, um, like, I know there's a lot of people that learn boxing or MMA, a lot of these various um, skills. Is there one in particular that you have seen, if an actor has always trained in, um, is helpful to have on set or beneficial in any way? Uh, yeah, uh, very good question. I, I, I've worked with actors who have such a massive spectrum of, of skills in that way. And one thing that I think has become very clear is that people that are just a specialist, just knowing one, one skill, whether it's boxing or, or MMA or whatever, they get very tuned in to that's the way to do something. And it can actually be quite hard to break them out of that to do what's required for their character in that given scene. And what I found is that people that have trained a bit in a lot of different ways, they've learnt a lot of different styles, not necessarily just the fights, you know, a, a bit of gymnastics, a bit of tennis, a bit of golf just learning different skills you learn how to learn and if if physical stuff is is something that you enjoy and I, i'm not i'm not expecting everyone to want to go away and do this but i would encourage you to go and just try lots of different things pick up skills and your your body the, the muscle memory that you get from learning something new is very different to the muscle memory of honing one skill really, really tightly. Um, so I would say go out and, and try many different things. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Cause then, I mean, I'm, I do dance, but I would love right. to just learn different things. And that's, you that's see, I mean, my guess is from your dance, you will pick up choreography and learn a sequence of moves. Well, yeah. maybe from gymnastics, you will learn a different way of moving. Maybe from boxing, you would learn a way of, of moving into a fight there's and they would all build together to give you a skill set that would be much more flexible for for many different different scenes oh, thank you oh. uh, you mentioned briefly that there's also stunt acting um i've had a little a bit of opportunity to work with stunt performers uh, as an acting coach, I think that um, we have a uh, uh, that's our that's our common connection, right? Was Cassandra Ebner who took my acting class. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the overlap there, you know, or uh, you know, what sort of um, what does stunt acting look like? I, I think it's a very cool um, uh, role that that uh, the the UBCP and actual contracts has, which coming from equity in the UK did not have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the recognition of uh, combination of skills of being able to, to act a part and, and um, uh, perform the action is, is, is really valuable. Um, I, there are so many different people that, that do stunt acting and, and audition and, and get stunt acting roles from people who are strong actors and have a little bit of physicality about them and so would be happy to throw themselves on the ground maybe, mm -hmm. to people who are extremely talented stunt performers and are okay with saying a few lines. And that, that spectrum is, is, is kind of infinite between, between those, those two. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's then back to what you were saying about uh, about training, about putting in the time and keeping yourself, keeping your skills up. If, if stunt acting is, is part of your, um, your skill set that you, that you market yourself on, coming to acting classes like this is every bit as valuable as going to your gymnastics class or your MMA class. 
And, and when you're working as a stunt coordinator, do you also end up um, coaching the performers in the action sequences? Oh, hundred percent. Yes. Um, I, I, especially if, if it's a, if it's an action sequence that we're hoping to get our, um, our cast member heavily involved with, they would come to me and my team and mm -hmm. we would, we would work them through the, the, the beats of that, of that action that they're going to be doing, whether it's getting sitting in a harness and feel, feel what it's like being in a harness, feel what it's mm -hmm. like just floating, feel what it's like getting taken up 20 foot up in the air. Um, so it's not a complete surprise on the day and you right. really kind of scared and you, you can bring your characterization to it. How good, and, and in, in addition to sort of getting people familiar with the physicality and sort of like the shape of the choreography, um, is there anything, I'm just, I'm super professionally curious about what that looks like if you're helping physical performers with their characterization, like what you've learned seems to be the most helpful or the most effective. I wonder if there's some tools that you use that we might be able to borrow for our own work in small ways. I, I think we are, we're trying to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the starting point for a character in any given piece of action is is often either a combination of confidence and uh, in control of the situation or suddenly out of control of the situation. Action tends to appear out of something unexpected. Mm -hmm. And having enough confidence in the safety and the choreography of what we've bought to enable the actor to bring their performance of this surprise and freshness to whatever has actually been rehearsed over and over and over mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, is is a is about a familiarity and a muscle memory and and it's 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 you know it's it's like uh, the rehearsal process is often about actually letting you free things up. It's mm -hmm. it, it feels like it's honing it in but by honing it in you can let go and I think if uh if I can get actors that work with me to that stage of being comfortable to let go and often people come into a sun rehearsal having not done anything like this and being quite nervous about am I going to get hurt here stun action is dangerous um but hopefully during the rehearsal process we'll we'll be able to show that it's it's not dangerous it's 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 kind of fun mm -hmm. and you can put your own character and your own performance over it and the guys that i surround you with are performers as well so mm -hmm. they will play off what you give them um so i i, I think I think the advice that I would give was embrace the, re the rehearsal process. Mm -hmm. um, make the most of it you can. And, and, you know, not everyone in this class and absolutely not everyone that I work with enjoys or is particularly comfortable with physical action. But if you can embrace it to the maximum extent that you can, your character will then be able to shine through the action. Beautiful. The, uh, hone it so that you can let go. Yeah. Yeah, thank yeah. you. That, that does feel really useful. Uh, it's it's four o'clock now. Does anybody have a last burning question uh, that you want to ask Richard Bradshaw before we let him get on with all of the, the work that he's doing? Because he just started working on Batwoman yesterday. No, okay. Uh, well, then unmute yourselves and uh, and let's say thank you to Richard for coming in. Richard, thank you so much for your time. Really, yeah, sure. no, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.